Ever wondered how one royal house, the House of Hanover, has left an indelible mark on the history of Great Britain? Well, prepare to embark on a journey through time, exploring the reigns of six remarkable monarchs, from George I to the iconic Queen Victoria. Our story begins in the early 18th century with George I, a German prince who found himself King of Britain due to a quirk of succession law. You see, George, as he's known in England, was the great-grandson of James I by James' oldest daughter, Elizabeth. He would have been 50th in line to the throne of Great Britain if it was not for the 1701 Act of Settlement blocking Catholics from the succession. As royal historian Ian Crofton stated in his book Kings and Queens of England, George was crowned October 20th, 1714, at the age of 54. According to historian Ian Crofton, no king could better have suited that age in which power slipped away from the monarchy and into the hands of an aristocratic oligarchy than the dull, unglamorous Georg Ludwig, elector of Hanover and Duke of Brunswick-Luneburg. Despite his initial unpopularity, George's reign saw the establishment of the cabinet system of government led by a prime minister, effectively limiting the monarch's power and giving rise to modern British democracy. Next we have George II. Crowned October 4th, 1727, he was said to have had his father's political common sense. He understood that he could only have a successful rule with the support of his ministers. However, he made it quite clear to them that they could not be successful without the support of the king. Such confidence he harnessed. George II was the last British monarch to personally lead his troops into battle. His reign was marked by significant military victories, such as the Battle of Dettingen during the War of Austrian Succession. According to historians, at one point during the war, George's horse took off, bolting to escape the loud roar of the war, violently taking George along with it. However, the king was able to quickly break free from his horse and directed the rest of the war on foot. Britain was victorious. Britain hadn't won a war in Europe since the great days of Marlborough. Back home, the king's relationship with his son Frederick was fraught with tension, a recurring theme in the House of Hanover. Our journey continues with George III, a monarch known for both his bouts of madness and his loss of the American colonies. However, according to Time magazine, he firstly wasn't mad with Porphyria. Secondly, he wasn't a tyrant king. Thirdly, he was perfectly sane throughout the American Revolution. And lastly, he wasn't responsible for Britain's defeat. Four major misunderstandings, all in one sentence, which can now be comprehensively set straight. The reason for the loss of the colonies were on the king's ministers, generals and admirals. According to the author, George did not wish to take part in strategy making of the cabinet. Interesting, isn't it? Crowned September 25th, 1761, he was the first of Hanover to be born a British king whose native language was English. He was once quoted as saying, Born and educated in this country, I glory in the name of Britain. A patriotic king, he felt it was his duty to guide the country along the path of virtue. However, those who opposed him simply could not stand him. They saw him as, according to historians, a tyrant out to subvert the Constitution. However, historians have also concluded, after careful examination, that for the most part, George ruled within constitutional limits as they were to be understood then. Seen as compulsive, his role in politics quickly dropped. Despite these setbacks, his reign also saw numerous scientific and cultural advancements, including the discovery of the publication of the first English dictionary. According to historicroyalpalaces.org, George I was the first European king to study natural sciences. He funded the astronomers William and Caroline Herschel, which eventually led to the discovery of a planet, which we now know as Uranus. In 1769, George commissioned the architect William Chambers to build an observatory on his Richmond estates to view the transit of Venus. It was believed astronomy could lead to improvements in naval and merchant navigation. George's collection of scientific instruments and natural history specimens were transferred to King's College London in 1824. Now on to George IV, a king known for his extravagant lifestyle and his contribution to the arts. Despite his personal failings, he left a lasting architectural legacy, including the iconic Brighton Pavilion. 
In 1829, a courtier by the name of Charles Greville wrote in his diary that, quote, he only wishes to be powerful in order to exercise the most puerile caprices, gratify ridiculous resentments, indulging vulgar prejudices, and amass or squander money. Not one great object connected with national glory or prosperity ever enters his brain. Historian Crofton states that his extravagance was widely resented as Britain suffered economic distress in the wake of the Napoleonic Wars. Following George IV, we have William IV, also known as the Sailor King. Crowned September 9th, 1831, his reign was marked by significant social and political reforms, including the abolition of slavery and the passing of the Reform Act of 1832, which expanded voting rights. Finally, a productive king trying to do what was right. Uncle to Queen Victoria, after his death in 1837, she was quoted as saying, Whatever his faults may have been, he was not only zealous, but most conscientious in the discharge of his duties as a king. He had a truly kind heart and was most anxious to do what was right. The sailor king's father, George III, sent young Prince William at the age of 13 to join the Navy. During his time in the Navy, he witnessed and fought in the American Revolution, during which George Washington concocted a plan to kidnap the young prince. He failed, of course. Finally, we arrive at the reign of Queen Victoria, the longest reigning monarch in British history until Queen Elizabeth II. Her reign, known as the Victorian era, saw the Industrial Revolution, the expansion of the British Empire and significant social and political changes. Under Victoria's rule, Britain became a bourgeois and an industrial democracy, ruling the biggest empire the world has ever seen. The House of Hanover, through its six monarchs, has left a profound impact on Britain and the world. From the establishment of the cabinet system to the expansion of the British Empire, their reigns were marked by significant political, social and cultural advancements, as well as personal and national challenges. Their legacy is a testament to the complex and ever-evolving nature of monarchy and power. So the next time you ponder upon the history of Great Britain, remember the House of Hanover and its indelible contributions. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the Hanover dynasty. In the next episode of Royal Bloodlines, we will uncover the House of Saxe-Coburg Gotha. Oh yes, one more thing. Don't forget to subscribe for more royal history. Until next time, keep loving history and stay curious.